Well, thanks again for being willing to to chat with us today. Um, so we'll start with the with the first question here, which is, who are your parents and what did they teach you? My parents were both my heroes, and they taught me more by example than they did what they said. My dad uh, had a business and was in the car business, and yet he was also in the livestock business uh, out on South Main next to Golden Corral where all of the cleared property is, was, the, was our business property. But anyway, he had some gypsies come in one day, and this is one thing he taught me. He had some gypsies come in and, and numerous cars, not just one. Their, one of their cars was broke down, and there was just a big bunch of people. A lot of them were, were tattooed and smoking, and my dad didn't judge that. He, he uh, gave them a car for theirs that was broke down. And he not only gave him a car, he had my brother and I work on that car so that it was roadworthy to, to go down the road. And we got it finished at about noon and I was high school age at the time. And he sent me down, which was called the Dairy Freeze, which is the American restaurant now, to buy 25 malts and hamburgers for those people to feed them. And I just watched what my dad was doing and I says, Dad, they're using you. And it wasn't till later that Cheryl and I were reading the Book of Mormon. And in, in uh, Messiah chapter four, verse 19, and it says, are we not all beggars? Don't we owe everything we have to the Lord? And I thought, my dad's way smarter than me. But, but to do that, he just served and served and served and wasn't worried about money. He was just wanting to serve people. It was just totally, totally honest in, in what, he, what he did. My mother was also an example in everything she did. At one point, my mother was the Relief Society president at the Indian branch. And she just loved those people. Uh, she, she served them along with, she would take me down to help old people pick their apples, take them in for them and their fruit. And she just, just loved to help people. I was actually, later years, was in the bishopric in the 19th ward, and uh, which the stake centers over on 400 South, uh, 100 East, and they needed somebody to clean the sacrament linen. And as a member of the bishopric, I extend that calling to my mother to maintain the sacrament linen. And it wasn't a long time before she died, but she was so excited to have a calling. And that was my parents, but they just taught me by example in their church callings, in their honesty, uh, to where I wanted to be just like them. <laughs> what were your parents' names? It was John and uh, John Lorraine and Isis Condi. My mother was from Hurricane and my dad, my dad's mother died when he's little and he just lived with different, different families uh, as, he, as he grew up and they met down in Hurricane. But yeah, they were good, good people. Thank you. Can you uh, give us a brief outline of the story of your professional life? A brief outline was I worked with my father uh, when I was about 20 years old and I was, I just got married. I uh, never worked in a service station before, but I knew the manager, company operator was leaving and he sent me down to talk to the big boss from 
from Salt Lake and I went down to talk to him and he hired me to, to company operate a truck, truck stop out on South Main Street, hiring and firing people and sending in reports. And then I did a, did a Whiting Brothers service station down where AutoZone is. And later I went back because my dad needed me and I worked with him and eventually bought the business. And my business was called Condi's Auto Wrecking and Repair Incorporated. And I had 700 to 1,000 cars at a state impound yard uh, where it was 24-hour towing with the fanciest tow trucks in town, did auto repair, sold cars, uh, and it was just a good, good business because I built it on, on honesty and word of mouth is better than the yellow pages to where I was just busy, busy, but uh, just had a just had a good time doing it in the towing business, and you can cut this out if you want to. In the towing business was neat to serve watching my dad to where back in the old days there wasn't enough motel rooms in town on holidays, and I'd go tow somebody in that wrecked their car, and there wouldn't be a, a room in the inn. And I asked Cheryl if it was okay, and she says, if they're nice people, you can bring them home. So I brought numerous people and I home, and I'd tell her, if you go downstairs, make sure you're decent. There's somebody in the guest room. And I've even taken people home for Thanksgiving dinner. So anyway, it was just neat. But that, that's what I did until, until I retired, and I just loved what I did and the people I worked with. Thanks, Danny. What defining experiences have shaped you into the person you are today? Well, one of my one of my big big ones that I've told you about before was was uh, having my young son die, and I got him got a picture. If you can see it, if I can hold it steady enough. But I had just, I had just baptized him two months earlier, but he came in with a tummy ache in the night, and I told him go use the bathroom, go back to bed, shorten the story. We took him down to the hospital the next day, and at eight years old, he had his appendix out. On account of my son, uh, on account of we didn't have any insurance, just a young couple, uh, the doctor, same doctor that delivered Cheryl and I sent, sent him home. But he still kept a bellyache, and we took him back to the hospital, and they flew him uh, to up to Salt Lake to the primary children's hospital and he stayed in the hospital for a time and finally died up there. Uh, and I had just baptized him two months earlier. And, uh, and that, was, that was hard. That was hard to do, but he was perfect. What do the rest of our family need to do if we're gonna be with him? They can't be mediocre. Uh, and uh, anyway, people, when we come back, Cheryl and I talked all the way back, oh, we'll sell this, sell our house. It's okay, we didn't have anything when we got married. But instead, people started giving us money in. And the, the stake had a dance the kids did to earn money for us. And it was so hard. They'd, people would give me money and I'd give it back to them. Here's another thing my dad taught me. He took me aside and he said, Dan, you are wrong. You need to learn to be as good of a receiver as a giver. You are depriving those people of blessings. And then the bishop even took me aside and says, Dan, you need to let them help you, but you look for other people that you might help. And I've gone through the rest of my life trying to do 
both of them and help those. And I even say prayer at night. Cheryl take turns at night, and I pray that I'll be led to somebody I might help and make a difference that I learned from my from my son and that experience. It could have devastated if instead it's had our whole, whole family want to try to be the best they can be so that they can be with him. He's perfect. I just baptized him. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that story. How have you struggled and grown in your faith and faithfulness? Well, I think that goes along with the story you just you just asked, because I, I haven't struggled on that. I just want to try to be the best that I can be, and Heavenly Father's just blessed me in everything I've done, whether it be callings, whether it be my business, that I was, that I was in. I charge less than anybody in town per hour, but still retired at 52. Was that me because I was so smart? No. Heavenly Father blessed me with everything I've done, whether it be callings in the church, my favorite scriptures, Ether 12 and 27. I just feel so inadequate. First time they call me on the high council, I can't do this. I was in with two, two college instructors, and here I was a dumb mechanic to be with them and be over all of the youth and the stake. I can't do that. I may be given seven talks in my whole life. And I, I read that. I can, I can do it with Heavenly Father's help. I can't do it, but we can. And I've, I've done that. I've been on the High Council two times. And, you know, but, but I can. I just feel if I do my part, Heavenly Father, just bless me and everything I've done. Thank you. What gospel truths are you most certain of? That Heavenly Father loves me and watching out for me. And if I do my part, He'll bless me and everything He's I do, and he's proved it to me. I just feel so powerful that he's blessed me in everything I've ever done. I can, I can, I can feel the truth of what you're saying. Uh, what do you most want your posterity to know and understand? I want them to know that. Cheryl, I just love them so deeply and want the very best for them. And I want them to know that Heavenly Father loves each of them and blesses them. And I, I think our family has proved that and tried. I've told my family that when Cheryl and I pray at night, uh, we pray that when we get to heaven, there won't be any empty chairs, that we'll all be together with Scotty that's perfect. And they know they know about that. I've got a 10-year-old granddaughter that, that is married now and served a mission uh, and, and has been married for, for about a year and a half, drew this picture at, at 10 years old and it represents a chair for every one of our family. And right in the middle, it's just a piece of line paper, but every chair is different. Right in the middle it says, none empty. And that's the way we feel as a family. We're trying to be there forever, not just one or be mediocre. And they know, they know and our family just, has so much love for each other and watches out and serves each other. And I just feel so blessed. Did you get that? Yep, sure did. How do you think about your purpose on earth? I think my purpose, I just feel strongly that I'm here not just for me, I'm here 
to serve Heavenly Father, and I serve Heavenly Father by serving others and helping them, and you know, doing everything I can to to serve my fellow man, and whether it be in callings, whether it be one of the love in my life, being a primary teacher, and I think being a primary teacher is my son that was just eight years old. I taught the seven, eight-year-old primary kids for, what, 10 years? I just love kids. But anyway, I just feel my purpose is to serve other people, serve Heavenly Father by serving other people. What are some callings that you've had that have helped you grow in the gospel? Since you mentioned the uh, teaching the youth, the seven, eight-year-olds. Well, I, I just, I, I don't know, feel, feel like I'm bragging, but I've actually served four missions. We've been bishop twice, counselor three times, served in the primary, working with, with the youth. But I, I just, just to, the one I caught was called to be on the high council. I came down from being bishop in summit and I'd maybe given seven talks in my whole life and they called me to be on the high council. I told Cheryl, oh no, they could think, Dan could, he'd been bishop. Let's see, we could call him to be a gospel doctrine teacher or maybe on the high council. I said it out loud to Cheryl. They called me to, to substitute teach gospel doctrine in the Old Testament two weeks and called me on the high council. And I come home and told Cheryl, there's just no way I can do this. I felt so inadequate. But again, we were reading the Book of Mormon in Ether. It says, fourth man, come unto me. I'll show unto them their weaknesses. For I give unto men weaknesses that they might be humble. And my grace is sufficient for all men that humble themselves before me. For if they humble themselves before me and have faith in me, then I will make weak things become strong unto them. I served that, served that calling. And I don't know how I did it, not once, but twice I was serving, serving there over the young women when I moved in this house. I was on the high council, but I just feel so blessed to give those talks. I didn't know about giving, giving talks, and I just, that was the biggest one to me. How can I do that? I can't do that, but I just know, I just know that it isn't Danny Condy. There's nothing two men can't do, especially if one of them's God. And I so feel strong about that, if that answers your question. That's a great answer. Um, I think we're doing, we're doing great on time. Yeah. Do you want uh, any questions that you have? Oh, I love being here and feeling your spirit, and, and uh, it's going to be hard to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, you know, hard, very hard to know what to edit out. Um, uh, no, no. I think the questions you're asking are great, giving us a really good feel for who you are. Well, who we are, yeah. and the lady in the other room. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, what do you want to say? Anything you would like to share with us about her, about Cheryl? I just feel so blessed, and, and after I got my daughter dating, I asked my mother-in-law, why in the world did you let Cheryl date me? Because <laughs> she was perfect, and she was teaching primary when I met her. But uh, anyway, we've just had such a good life, and look out for each other, and encourage each other, and, you know, to be the best that we can be, and I, I, I just, part of I just feel so blessed in everything I've done. We, we will be having our 58th wedding anniversary in just a few days. Wow. Uh, okay, on to the lightning round. So, what is your favorite food? 
shall I answer that together? And the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Never met a meal I didn't like. <laughs> uh, what's your favorite place? My favorite place is I love to go to church and church callings, but I just love to be, I mean, we used to go to Disneyland every other year, and it isn't place, it's to be with my family. We've got just such a deep love in our family and we just love being with them and where they're at it isn't what town we're in it's just being with our family uh, what are your hobbies or interests uh, i don't have a camera but i just thought i would share share one is being in the car business this is what i started on after i retired is a 56 Chevy two-door hardtop. It's the fastest car I ever drove. Uh, I finished it in my garage. Cheryl and I figured I had between 2,000 and 2,500 hours doing it. Uh, she, uh, she would bring me out at in front of the Shakespearean Festival. Uh, Brother Adams and I were friends, and he asked me if I'd bring it down in front for one of his plays, so I did. Uh, but anyway, I just loved loved to do with that. I took it, got it all done, took it to took it to Beaver and Perwin and got trophies at both of them. But we ended up selling it when we went on our first mission to New Jersey, Morristown Mission. Uh, just to keep it in the garage, you have to insure it all the time, just to set. And so, but anyway, that was my hobby. I've got a, Cheryl put me together a, a big folder of a lot of the cars that I've owned. And I used to paint and restore lots of cars, but this is the one I did. But when I moved here, it's got a little garage. I can't, can't play with them there. But anyway, I just, that's just, one of, one of the cars that, that I did was, was 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 fun, just inside out. I got pictures for you guys to show you what it looked like while I was working on it. That is, that's really cool. But anyway, it was that's that's in the next to my garage in my last home where I lived. And tell us what it is again. What is it? It's a 56 Chevy uh, Bel Air, yeah. uh, but I upgraded everything to where it had a 60, uh, 66 Chevelle 396 engine in it, oh. and it's the fastest car I ever drove. No kidding. Do you know what has become of it? Actually, I do. I sold it because I was going on a mission and just to have my grandkids and stuff live in my house. I sold it for about what I was in it. The people that bought it went to California. They came up and bought it from me and took it down. They changed the suspension and changed the, changed the engine and put the tune port in. And I was told it went through an auction uh, for $115,000. Oh I didn't touch the body, just You're the... Kidding suspension and the new tune port engines but two, two of my friends that were at the auction when it went through oh they're the ones that told That's me amazing. But, which is a compliment but i did more sold it for what i was in it cheryl wouldn't ride in it because everybody would look at her they'd zoom by and back up <laughs> I even uh, took it over to Beaver to car show and she didn't even want to ride over there with me. She just followed me. <laughs> but she, she's quite a reserved girl, so. But anyway, it was just just fun to do. But I, I, I like doing those things and fixing and restoring. And I, if I do my best work all night long <laughs> doing things. That answers your question more than you wanted. That's but. A great, no, that's a great answer. Uh, how about uh, a book or books that have influenced you? 
I'm not a big time reader like my wife, but the Book of Mormon, like the two scriptures I told you, and just just reading, I'm enjoying reading the Bible. Cheryl and I will read as soon as you're gone, and we read it, hold hands that I learned uh, learned from a family at home, to Dave and Larry Reese. We hold hands and we say our prayers, but we read the scriptures every night and then hold hands and say our prayer. And just reading that together, and then we watch it on Taylor and Tyler, you know, before for about over an hour. But anyway, I just love the scriptures and, you know, what, what, what can I do to be better? So it's, but the, it's the Book of Mormon mostly and like say those two scriptures and scriptures will jump out at me my my i just got some new scriptures but my oldest one ever blank page has got some of my favorite and they're all underlined <laughs> but anyway i just i but i don't not a big reader of other things uh, if that answers your question favorite hymn I wrote it down, and my favorite hymn is, is uh, because I've been given much, and have I done any good in the world today? And then my primary song is, Heavenly Father Loves Me. And while I was in the bishopric going to girls camp, the girls sang that around the campfire, I'd never heard it before. And I thought that was so, so beautiful. Heavenly Father loves me, if you know which one that is. To where I remember one time bow hunting up on Cedar Mountain. I mean, some mountain where I could look down and see the water tank up here and had the squirrels coming up by me with the buck sand on me and little fawns. And that, that was the song that I thought of and I actually sang it to myself while I was up there. You know, the sun was just coming up in the morning and how beautiful everything is. And, you know, the Heavenly Father of Danny Condy. Yeah. And so that's, that's probably my favorite primary song. And the other two is, I just sing that and, you know, what can I do to help somebody? Have I done any good today? Or, you know, or, or am I just biding my time? Well, anything else you'd like us to know about you? No, but I, I just I just love our ward, the people in it, whether they're members, whether they're non-members, everybody loves everybody and watches watches out for the needs of of other people. And I just I just think it's not so neat. I just feel blessed blessed to be here and I just know that God lives and I know that he hears and answers our prayers. I, I just feel so inadequate but so blessed to be here. Thank Amen. You. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um. But I think that was long.